Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Podcast Without Boundary. Today, we will talk about coronavirus. So, Mission, how are you? I'm good. Today is yeah. third episode, is it? Yeah, third episode. Ah, third episode. Okay, mm. okay. So, we will first start out with Malaysia cases. So, in Malaysia recently, we have few cases, which uh, one of it is the bubble, which uh, they say the bubble... Pakistanis bubble owner actually uh, test positive for COVID-19 and then uh, actually conducted illegal house-to-house service. And uh, Mission, what do you think about this? What do I think? Uh? This one, I understand he needs the money, but he shouldn't be doing that. Long. I think there is no doubt what he do that one is against whatever the government has already ordered. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. The government say... You cannot go house to house. He goes house to house. Then yeah. he gonna, then he got surprised to pick a Jew. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, of course you, the government, the SOP say that you cannot do house to house. You know, uh, mm. bubble bubble service. Mm. However, the demand is there, of course, and uh, mm. to make a living, of course, he take the he take the risk of doing house to house. And because and, he take the he take the risk, and then if those people just wait for a little while, then the bubble now, as we speak today, is sixteen of June. It's already yeah. open. Yeah, if yeah. If they are just patient a bit, they will cut the hair without any problem. Yeah, so yeah. This is and, for pure pure example of asking for trouble, lah. Yeah, so and put it that way. And according to what the the article they write is actually, he. The, the bubble actually was found to be positive on June 11 and a total of 40 people who had close contact with the man has been screened and quarantined. So it shows that there are large, the, okay, there are large amount of people that actually demand for such service. Uh, and we can see that how people actually so desperate or how people actually can't control themselves throughout the whole pandemic. Yeah. So for me, for me, what I can see from this is actually not just other than uh, the influence of money, the this the desperate of need of money or financial support, but also how people can control themselves because we normally just want what we want or, or we just can get what we want directly. We no need to you know wait for uh, some time to to get the basic needs of us. And I think this is very interesting where our human basic behavior actually show throughout the pandemic that, you know, we are a species that we we want everything instantly or we can't we can actually tahan or we can actually control ourselves when we are in such a, you know, a, a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Got, yeah. got a point there so yeah. I just feel it's funny la. it's like imagine those 40 people going to cut the hair only to realize you can cut the hair on yeah. the maybe of, one week uh, later that, yeah. Yeah, yeah a week later after those cases so yeah. if they just wait a little bit longer all this could have been mm-hmm. yeah. so mm-hmm. yeah, and, go ahead, and, go ahead. and the price of you know you, you cutting hair is actually increased do you realize that no, Even barber. Yeah, so, I don't know. Okay. so normally how much they charge? Normally it's ten ringgit uh per cut for, for barber shop, normal normal Indian barber shop. And now it's fifteen ringgit. So it's increase of five ringgit. And when you go and cut your hair, uh what they will do is actually they will wrap a plastic bag around you instead of using the reusable cloth. And then all the scissors or the uh or the equipment is actually uh, uh put into uh, sanitize so like so a liquid like that yeah the it? liquid yeah it's like how you mm-hmm. how we do it in us so uh we, i can understand why they increase five ringgit for the uh fee but then i still don't i still don't understand how it how the standard size can actually 
prevent the, the spreading of the coronavirus. Just you, okay, just imagine, uh, I, I have coronavirus, for example, and then I go for haircut. Then you are the person next to me, okay? So after me, then you will take your hair cut, okay? So now the person cut my hair, and uh, of course, when they cut my hair, my sweat and, and my body liquid will actually stick on the equipment, okay? Then they put the, the scissors back into the sanitize the bottle. Then I finish, I walk away, then you sit, you sit on the, on the chair. Okay, when I sit on the chair, my, my sweat, my body liquid is actually on the, on the chair. No matter how you clean the chair, they will still be stained on the chair, right? You can't 100% clean it because it's in a short time. So, uh, after that, you start cutting your hair. The barber using the same equipment, using the same scissors to cut your hair, okay? And then the barber can't, the, the barber actually wear an apron. And the barber didn't change the apron after he cut my hair. So, what do you think will happen to you? Because everything that he used to cut my hair, actually used for you also. Like the glove, the mask, the face mask, the, the apron. So, for me, it will be the same thing. The virus will still able to spread. Even though you sanitize your chair, you sanitize your, your equipment, but your body equipment like your apron, your face mask is still there. And then they, are, they might be still a little or a small percentage of virus that is still contained on the chair and on the equipment. You understand what I mean? So, so, <laughs> so I don't see they are... Yes, it's a good effort to actually you know, stand, uh, uh, clean everything so that you can have a, a clean environment for your client, your, for your customer. But then I, I also don't see that how, what they do, what the SOP actually can really work. So what do you think about the whole, the whole SOP? I haven't cut thing? my hair at the bubble or saloon yet, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. but just check with you, when you go into the bubble, did they temperature screen you? They, oh yeah, uh, they do. They actually, oh, they just do, the, uh, normal, the, name, the norm SOP, write your name, write okay, your phone okay. number. At least, at least they do that. Lo. Yeah. But as for, as for the glove wise, this one, this one is hard for us or the bubble to say that because sometimes some of these, uh, what do you call that? Some of this uh, SOP is actually not set by them; it's set by the minister, yeah, or the, ministry. the ministry, so to speak. So, if there's any question, it should be directed to the ministry, not the bubble. The bubble just follow order. Yeah, yeah, they just follow the yeah. order. Of course, it's a very gray area. I don't yeah. think it's like a black and white. Like it's not like do this, you'll be safe. Do mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you will be not safe. I think mm -hmm. it's always a gray area in between one. So mm -hmm. this one have to leave it to the ministry. No? But yeah. when the fact you tell me like they take the scissors, they cut the you cut the hair and you say what the next person they just put it in the sanitizer, that's it, right? Yeah. That means the hair also all stick inside no? the sanitizer. Yeah, because when you cut your hair, it's wet, right? Your your hair, they will spray some water on your hair so that they can easily cut. Then why not wash the you might as well wash the scissors and cut again instead of just put in the sanitizer. Well, of course, that would be safer, right? Timing is also one of the thing, right? Imagine you few have... It's just few minutes, but then just two minutes, you go to the back, wash, you're done. Yeah, but then you're imagine done. a barber, right? A normal barber, mm. there are 15 person waiting in a room, Mm. or there are 15 person waiting for the car and then there are only two chairs and then two two uh, uh, bubble cut bubble yeah so should be the, so, same, but it should be the same because uh, what is that called sorry, I mean now it's the new normal everyone has to get used to all this waiting yeah, so, yeah. so, so my know. point is that you know mm. it's, it's not gonna work if let's say you just put the, the equipment into a center size and then you just clean it Maybe, maybe like what you say, they should you know really uh, clean the whole seasons, like wash it mm. or, or mm. You know, do something with it. Yeah, mm. then that would be better. Lot it's it's kind of like uh, you just imagine you go to a restaurant, your fork and spoon after you have mm. eaten, 
they will wash it, they don't just put into the sanitizer. Obviously, wash yeah, it yeah, more they effective. wash it, yeah. So they should do it to the uh, just a bit logic thinking uh, they should do. Yeah, either that's... one either one is having a very weird SOP or someone is not using common sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it will be very interesting to see that. But thankfully, as we speak today, there is no other cases about the what is that called about the COVID nineteen, right? On the, no in terms cases. of bubble. Mm. Yeah, and in terms of the bubble one that isn't there's no new cases involving a bubble, right? Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. They are still okay. okay. Yeah. Because the amount of Malaysian <clears throat> actually having COVID nineteen is very uh, small amount. So I yeah. actually yeah. don't worry about uh <clears throat> Large scale second wave or third wave. I'm more concerned about you know how we going to uh, remember the whole pandemic and remember how to keep our hygiene and social distance. Mm -hmm. hmm. Speaking of social distance, also uh, just share when I was at the at the public transport or whatever. Also, the social distancing is just like not really there. Also, la. I think people are getting closer and closer. Yeah, yeah. But do you notice that, that? Yeah, that's the thing because when we talk about social distance, I don't think uh yeah, we sometimes we need to keep okay, it's more like how Japanese and Taiwanese do for me. So for example, when you know you are sick, you then you should automatically wear a mask, you should automatically stay a distance from other people. Mm. So, I don't think normally, like normal life, we should be social distancing because uh, it will take a lot of space and then in public transport, it's not making sense at all. But then when you are sick, you should have to realize or you should have the, the thoughts of you know, keeping yourself distant from other people and keeping yourself uh, uh, safe from other people. Yeah, that's what I, what, what I think people should take or should learn from the whole uh, COVID-19 or the whole pandemic. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I see some people like, the, the mindset is not there. It's not like, oh, we need to distance. They are just like, no, we just go out, we don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just don't care. And then when you sick, you cough, you just cough publicly. You don't even close your uh, mouth. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. These yeah. are a few concerns. You know, if people cough, then like, okay. And the best part is, uh, when they cough, they don't cough in the mask. They take out the mask, they cough, and then they cover yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, what's the difference, right? <laughs> Ay, yo, that's why. Where for what? <laughs> wasting, wasting resources. Yeah, wasting resources. That's why I don't understand. Uh. Yeah, mm -hmm. these are those uh, those boomers, uh, usually. Mm. Yeah, they just, they just sway because they don't want to get someone. Nah. The, mm. the, they have the, the mentality like that. Uh. Mm -hmm. Not everyone, not everyone. We're not saying everyone, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just some of the the ugly side we saw, lah. Yeah, the Steve and Karen. Mm. Mm. Karen's being Karen's. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So we we move on from that. Uh, we yep. go and okay. we go to the second case. Mm. So uh, the second case is actually more interesting. It's basically more people die due to road accident than COVID nineteen. Mm. Uh, during the whole MCO in Malaysia. And mm. uh, what it shows here is a graph, Jumlah Case Kemanangan Jalan Raya dan Kematian Sepanjang PKP mm. dan PKPB. So it shows that uh, there are actually, every day there are actually 300 to 500 and until 800 cases mm. of road accident. And uh, from PKP1 is 58 die case kematian and yeah and pkp b6 which is right now is actually 231 cases of human death average human death so you can see that the number is at, and when you lock down at home you when you quarantine at home of course when you see the first graph is actually uh, 5,000 over Kamanangan and then 58 die. So which means people people still breaking the law. Then we can see the decrease of number, then increase again and decrease again. 
and right now because is we are open, uh, people are allowed to balik kampung this and that. Mm. Of course, the number just you know raise up to twenty five thousand. Yeah, increase to twenty five thousand, and then death is two hundred thirty one case. Uh, I think it's also back to what normally will happen uh, without the whole pandemic or MCO or the whole quarantine. So this is quite you know quite fascinating that we can see that. Uh, how good driver are Malaysian, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, the people will, of course, you will always see one camp of people who will say, uh, again, I'm not speculating, I'm just seeing what, uh, how, how, how the public responds. Then you have one group of people, oh, it's because of drink and driving. Mm. But if you look at the number just now, uh, a, to say 300 over people having drink driving, like all 300 cases are drink driving, I think that is completely insane. Uh. I yeah. do not think so. Like, that would be very crazy. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Which, by the way, if you want to know about drink driving, uh, you can check on the our first episode. We actually talk about the drink driving, drunk driving, sorry, drunk driving in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. So, this one, they say like, uh, the what is that called? The cases is like, you will see one camp like, oh, it's all because of the drink driving, so we must ban the alcohol. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this one is right a, a little bit, but it's not the full story. Like. I think there's a lot of factor. What is yeah. more alarming, if you ask yeah. me, is also I mean, we have to think about. Mm, go ahead, you first. According to the whole uh, news article, actually, drunk driving, there are only 21 cases during the uh, January to May. So when you talk, when you say that you know, so many cases because of drunk driving, uh, that's wrong because it clearly shows that you know, between from this PDIM statistic, eh, between January to May, there there are there were twenty one cases of wrong driving. So it's maybe what ten percent of the whole total number or one yeah. percent. Yeah. At most ten percent. Mm, mm. So that is very strange. Then what would you speculate what do you think are the reasons other than drunk driving is the reason of accidents well, that happen? Mm. Driving skill is one thing. Then I think other than that is because uh, people are <clears throat> they, 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 they can't they can't take the quarantine anymore. They are kind of like <clears throat> off the control or they are just want to get out from home. So they just drive and then they, when they meet the police uh, or when they suspect someone follow them at the police, then maybe they just get crazy and then you know, accident happen. I think I think that's what happened. And I also think that uh, the large mar- the large number is actually caused by uh, grab food or, or 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 delivery or logistic uh, person because I know a lot of people that doing uh, food and grab food they actually get into accident because of the raining because of the the timing they need to deliver the food this and that so I think that also contribute large. Uh, number on the whole cases. It'll be interesting to see whether accident happens, is it because of the driver's fatigue mm-hmm. or is it because of the driver's uh, uh, mistake, so to speak, like mm-hmm. skill, in terms of mm-hmm. just driving mm-hmm. skills, or is it because mm-hmm. of fatigue? I hope, uh, who knows if they have a statistic from there, then maybe they can narrow down and see what they can do. Mm. Um, should we say, yeah, or better still, accident, understand that it's not just when people say accident, they would think of like the person who is involved in the accident. Accidents, mm-hmm. road accidents actually plays a part in all of us like that. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. Best example, I don't know if you saw or not. Uh, or maybe if we manage to find the video, we can we can put it in the description. Do you have you ever saw the one in Penang where there's like one Maivi on fire, then the bomba was saving yeah. the Maivi? And then, then there was another, another Maivi looking. Yeah. Busy body go and look and then end up mm. another might be hitting at the busy body might be. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Way, the, way, yeah. the, way, the four yeah, the four so might be also yeah. Yeah, yeah four mm. might be so, together. Yeah. Mm. Moral of the story is uh sometimes it's not just that's why people think accident think of the accident, <clears throat> they don't think about those bystanders or passerbys. Yeah. Mm. And your typical boomers will always want to take number, you know. Yeah, yeah. Take the accidents number and uh wish for luck. I don't know lah. Yeah. To them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. That's all right. right. 
so we now we talk about what happened to you know the coronavirus out of Malaysia and mm. that is very interestingly happened back to lockdown and yeah looking forward for a second wave uh, coronavirus outbreak So what happened is basically uh, part of Beijing lockdown as virus outbreak gathers fresh p uh, pace. And uh, I think not just Beijing, but then the whole, there are many uh, places in the whole China is actually back to lockdown. And, uh, you know, China official of course say there are no such thing, you know, the whole lockdown thing is fair and then there are no increase of large amount of uh, spreading or the COVID-19 uh, close to end of you know, 0% in China but when we look back to the history we know that you know the China actually give false number and give false uh, information about the whole virus so when I look at this for me it's more like what happened back to January, which is the large outbreak uh, happened again in China. So again, uh, I, so just now you're saying we are not actually uh, against China or anything, mm -hmm. but it's just that we have seen, I think the world has seen quite a good record that uh, most communist country, again, it's not because they are communist country, but it's just most communist country uh, have a very his a very good history of always underreporting things or yeah. manipulating, manipulating things. Yeah. Uh, right. I don't want to name other countries, uh, but I think he and you know yeah, yeah. this uh, communist country. So yeah. he's always like have to be very skeptical. It's not that they're a bad person, but it's just too much of a time throughout the the time of history we always learn that they always underreport. Right? Yeah. If you look yeah. at uh, China on uh, Jan January they reported uh, and initially, what the, the doctor told them that that is going to be a case, and the officials charge him for for fake news, right? Trying yeah, to, fake news. Uh, trying, trying to, to spread talk, some... talk bad about the country. Uh, mm, 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 mm. And then now, all this thing is happening. Uh, so that's why that you look at Beijing having a second wave is uh, I think we are all expecting it. We just didn't expect when it's going to happen. Yeah. 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 Maybe it happened already, yeah. and then and then you know they now only they start reporting because yeah. they can't control yeah. again. I'm not sure. Yeah. So mm. this is going to be. I guess this virus is going to be in the world for a very long time. Yeah, it'll be quite I'm a long afraid. time. Yeah, I'm predicting. Mm. I don't know. I mean, for me, at least until me, the end of the year. For me, uh, for me at the beginning, what I what I actually believe is that the virus will be here. Uh, for the rest of our life, even you know, hundred or 10, 200 years later, it won't even disappear hundred percent. It's just like any other flu that happened in this world. So what I believe is that if we can't beat it, then we need to live with it. Because if you if you don't live with it, you keep quarantine or keep locking down, then nothing will change. You will just you know lost your job and then the economy will, won't run. So what we can do is actually basically for me, I will just leave it, it and then I will start going to work and then I will stop quarantine because it's not logic to keep at, uh, you know, stay at home. Especially when we need, you know, we need vitamin D, we need, we need to work to get money and to get ourselves back to the line. So we can't wait until the vaccine because we're not sure when will the vaccine appear and when will the vaccine uh, be found and introduced to the world. So just just leave it and just start going to work. If you get the virus, then you go to the hospital, you do your quarantine in the hospital, then your body will automatically produce the antibiotic for the virus. Then it will be I think that will be more logic or, or what we actually can do. Because when you when you be when you are so afraid and you, you stop like what I say, you stop working, you stop you start quarantine, it wouldn't help at all for me. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to say anything about that. I also don't know how yeah. all this virus or the uh, the virus that caused the action is going to work. So very bold statement. Uh, some of uh, what you said just now. So mm -hmm. I'm going to just leave it there. And uh, just for my end, I just hope everyone cooperates. Uh, that's that is all. I think this one is uh, not about just in. It's not just in. Uh, all around the world, all around the world, not just in Malaysia, is mm -hmm. that uh, whatever, whether you're a citizen or you're immigrant, you have to work with the authorities. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. a couple of days, I mean, I have a, my housing area has a park the other day. Mm -hmm. So I saw like there's this group of people, I mean, the SOP says in Malaysia very well, is that like you can't have any touching spot, right? Yeah, you cannot have any touching you will see spot. Some, uh, you will see some immigrants, they, in my place, they actually let the kids play football. The kids do catching, catching like that. Mm. You know, tanka, tanka, like, like that. Like it's, what I uh, say just not now. Very, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, just like what I say just now. For example, if let's say you just stop everything, like you don't let people to do physical or, or mm. uh, like, like physical touching uh, sport, for mm. example, okay? Then, like swimming. For example, like swimming, like boxing, like wrestling, then you, you can't do everything. You mean that the, all these sports should be cancelled and should not be happen again? Then it's not making sense, right? Even we, like what I said just now, we don't know when we found the vaccine and then we don't know the vaccine right now that they say can work, can actually work or not because <clears throat> they are still in the examination uh, uh, process. So we, we are not sure do the vaccine really work or not. So are we going to stop doing all those physically uh, physical sport or, or activity because of the COVID-19? Or we are going to start doing this activity, but we are more careful. We are staying high, we are we are we, we practice hygiene and we practice social distancing uh, when we get sick or <clears throat> and we start having those practice where we, when we know we are sick, then we tell people, oh, we are sick. Uh, today I'm not going to work, but then we will be working at home. So I think instead of <clears throat> depending on vaccine or uh, keep quarantine, maybe we should start or we should practice a better practice or lifestyle so that we can all together uh, work out a way to continue working, continue doing our sport, and at the same time, we stop the whole virus spreading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. Mm. You want to move on the oh yeah. the forgot we <clears throat> almost forgot the Beijing one. I yeah, think the there's also market. one fish market, right? Yeah, the fish mm. market thing. <clears throat> so that the fish yeah the fish market is basically saying that. Beijing supermarket stopped selling salmon after wholesaler tests positive for COVID-19. And then, uh, of course, they are, they are they're saying that the supermarket, the owner actually get the COVID-19 and then uh, they say that the salmon itself contained the virus because of the seller. And then the chopping board also one of the main thing which they say they found the virus on the shopping board itself. So, uh, for me, I don't think that's a logic thing to do. It's just like people doing online bully, then you stop the whole internet. It's not logic at all. And if let's say you say that people actually uh, can convert the virus through shopping board or through the meat, then it seems go to like chicken, like go to like other food because when you sell it, you need to touch it and then you need to chop it, right? So if let's say you say, oh, salmon cannot sell, then other food you should, you, <laughs> you also cannot sell, right? Because you also touch it, right? You also cut it, right? Yeah, these are very, very strange, uh, very strange uh, regulations from them. Lah. I know yeah. they want to, maybe they are, they are going for the play safe uh, method. Mm -hmm. Then, but I find it interesting because I mean theoretically, virus as long as you cook the food, you should be fine, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. After, I mean, that's after what the, certain that's what I was I was told. Yeah, it's like after a certain temperature. So, mm. 
I mean, this is going to because they just say, "Oh, we're not going to sell in supermarket." Mm. I mean, I know it's a very small niche, but economic wise, you are actually hurting again the manufacturers again. Yeah, like, yeah. The retailers, you're you're hurting them again because they're just about to start back the economy, and then you tell them not to sell, and then they're like, "Ah, are they going to back off?" Mm. Right. So this is going to hurt them a lot. Whereas mm. what they can do is uh, maybe instead of saying like, "Oh, oh stop all salmon immediately." Maybe they should have said like, uh, for now, all the salmon has to be cooked. Example, you cannot do sashimi or anything. Mm. I mean, that would, be a, that would be a better way. Then you can sort of revive the economy a little bit. And mm-hmm. uh, at the same time, you don't, uh, I mean, the, the sellers still can continue to sell. Mm. Right? Mm. And yeah. I just, I'm just thinking, because I know it's the, whole, the, whole, the wholesaler, but like you say, uh, let's say if the product is really contaminated, Mm-hmm. Pretty sure it's not just one item. It's going to be the whole item at the warehouse or at the at mm-hmm. the uh, what is that called the whole the whole wholesale part. Home market, yeah. So, yeah, the whole market. So this is uh, we'll see, we'll see. But I would mm-hmm. think it will hurt the economy again, no? Yeah, I mean, if let's say they they do continue doing this kind of thing, like keep mm-hmm. uh closing closing down those factory or those market, then of course it will back to lockdown again, then it will you know, stop the economy run again. But this brings me, I ask you one question, and mm-hmm. you, you tell me how you think. Let's say if someone works in the water, when the water works, that means uh, the water pipe or those, the sewage in our country. Mm-hmm. Okay. And one of the worker has, uh, co- has COVID-19. Mm-hmm. So does this mean all water tap need to be stopped? You cannot drink yeah. water? You you drink the rain, <laughs> you call it the rain yeah. water, then you drink it. <laughs> I want to I just want to know like, just in case uh, let's say let's say all the sum, all the sources is from one tanki and uh, one of the worker there has uh has the virus. So does this mean right, right? So mm. instead of stopping water which is not which is not practical, right? So if I'm the if I'm the government or I'm the regulator, I would say like all right, uh, maybe just maybe you set a temporary law, it's like all water have to be cold. Or at mm. least being uh, highly encouraged to boil the water before you drink, even mm. though it's from our tap, mm-hmm. something like that. I think that would be more practical. Mm-hmm. Right, like, right. Like, Instead of like just like what I say just now, uh, many times, mm. actually, like we need to leave it, it. We know that it's everywhere, so yeah, yeah. we can't avoid it. We can't fight it. Then we need to we need to accept mm. it. We need to join it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's just that the matter think, how we you, prevent yeah. to get sick. Yeah, that's what we need to do next. Mm. Mm. Agree, agree. Because you can only contain that uh, that that amount of time or that that certain that certain stance only. Mm-hmm. You cannot like control hundred percent. So why not learn to live with it so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. Right. It's like I, I'm I'm just glad in Malaysia we don't we don't uh, set tough regulation. Can you imagine like oh because we are dengue so everyone must have uh, aircon at home like that, you know? <laughs> example, I'm just giving example. Yeah, It'll be yeah. very tough. Or like every house, you need to have uh, what do you call it? The, the mosquito, mosquito wirings net. or those mm-hmm. uh, those net. You must have all the net. Or every house must have one uh must have one. I don't know what you call it. What do you call it? The, the round spider uh, thing you've got. The I don't know what you call it. Uh, but yeah, but yeah. Basically, yeah, but, the uh, mosquito killing thing. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's like whatever repellent, yeah, it's like every house must have one shield box. So you, can, you can imagine if we have to do like that because we're yeah. doing dengue. Wow, yeah, that would be that would be yeah. very, very tough, right? And imagine people that can't afford it. Then <laughs> what about them? You can't. Uh, you're going to forget about them. Yeah. Mm. This is what I find oh. when you when you share the news that uh, uh, China they how they just. Like this is they just hurt the economy again. It's like oh, I I don't know. I just don't think it's the right call, uh. Yeah, I think like, it's maybe they right. can say maybe another alternative, right? Is they can mm-hmm. say uh just treat it like a forty product. So you can just say like if you are using X brand of the salmon, only that batch is being have to pull out, uh. Maybe that's the least they mm-hmm. can do, uh, right? Mm-hmm. It's so innocent those who are like salmon other salmon competitors without any problem. Mm-hmm. Cannot yeah, yeah. Sell just because there is one small one case whole it, right? seal, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you say then I mean, if you are someone retailer, you at one point you're like, yeah, I get to sell again, and then you're like, ah, mm. I cannot sell again. Mm. I, I just find it weird. Like, I know it's a very small niche. It's just I don't know how many population is there in Beijing, but yeah, people are saying, oh, it's just one state. 
Yeah, but mm-hmm. man, that's it's still money, ma. It's still mm. it's still uh, economy, ma. So that is going to impact him. Yeah, and you imagine those fish that they already buy or they already import into China, and because yeah. of uh the the one case, then they need to actually throw away all the salmon or all the stock in the in the warehouse. So you imagine how 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 much or how many money they will lose because of this one restriction the or solution, one thing. The, the solution, I think government should find a solution, not just ah, stop. They're not stopping the problem. They should, there's a difference yeah, yeah. between stop the problem and solve the problem. Yeah. What they're doing is stop the problem. Stop mm. doesn't solve the problem. Mm-hmm. Solving mm-hmm. solves the problem. I yeah. think everyone has to have to know that also. Right? Yeah, there's a difference and it will create a very quick uh, uh, difference in the future. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because now it's just summer. What if it's vegetables? Like I say, what if it's tap water? You mm. can't just stop, right? They're going to use rainwater, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it really, and, I really find it very... It's a bit... I find it bizarre like, how the how the authorities are thinking. I mean, again, I'm not anti-China or what, but just communist country always have very... very yeah. Uh, very, dif- very different standards, uh, I'll put it that way. It's and all, let's hope not... Yeah. And let's hope not they under-report yeah. or hide some more cases. La. Yeah, it's all about the reputation, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes this country, if they're just willing to drop the ego a bit, I think that would be great. Like, you want to show people you have very little case, and then? Yeah, nothing. I'm, right. Do you get Nobel Prize or will you be voted like the best country in the world like that? I don't think so, right? Yeah, so why I mean, bother just this pandemic, numbers? yeah, the, uh, the whole thing is actually when you tell truth, when you really uh, uh, show the real thing, then people will appreciate what you do. Like Taiwan, they try to share their knowledge, how to uh, how they actually contain the whole virus. And people actually appreciate what they do. And when you start uh, hiding uh, information or you start telling people the truth, then people will start feeling that like disgusting and people won't appreciate what you do. Mm. Mm-hmm. So this one, I really don't know how this, uh, I just hope all this thing, let's that's, that's just not hide any more things. Uh, that I mean, mm-hmm. God knows what they are, they are hiding some more. Mm-hmm. You know, right? the fact that they under-report, then the, I think a few months ago when they report, uh, they were yeah. under-reporting, right? Mm-hmm. I think that one was already, uh, surprise, not surprise. <laughs> mm-hmm. They already did what they did. So I, I think it's better. I just hope everyone in the world, every government in the world, cooperates. Uh. Mm-hmm. It's like what what benefit do you get? Do you think like, let's say if there's a country that suddenly say they have zero cases today, do you believe? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. do you believe it? Yeah, unless you stay in the North Pole or South Pole, then maybe mm-hmm. no. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, so, like like back to what I said, Taiwan actually had zero case until today. I mean, not to say until today was zero case, which way, uh, from. February, I think February or March, uh, they stopped the whole virus and they closed their border to to country like China. Then until today, they have zero cases. So which means the total cases in Taiwan is about 388, if not mistaken. So uh, we, we, we see that, we, we know that, you know, they can actually contain the whole thing. So yeah, we should learn from them and then no more hiding like what you say. Mm, yeah. Maybe I was wrong to say like no, it's zero case nobody believe. But what I mean is zero case is like the country from starting until now there is zero uh, case entirely zero. Antarctica, uh, not, Antarctica. Not like that. A day zero. Uh, if that country has zero case for that day, I believe. Yeah. When you say like throughout the entire from January until now there is zero case, then I will find it very hard to believe. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Unless that country is I don't know like Wakanda or like somewhere. Yeah, you know, we have 500 countries, right? So yeah. we have 500 countries, so maybe we only discover 200, right? <laughs> North Korea have no case. Mm. So I leave it to them. La. <laughs> I think, you know, like, whether do they have, I don't want to say anything. La. I'm not an international expert. I'll let them do, but I just hope they are not, I just really hope they are not hiding and they know what they are doing. <laughs> I'm going to put myself, I want to say that politically correct. You know? Yeah. Uh, so that would be very interesting. So mm-hmm. I guess that's it. Right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So to yeah, so to recap today, we talked about um, 
you talk about uh, COVID-19, basically, the region and all around the world. You talk mm -hmm. about your barber shop experience and uh, mm -hmm. some, uh, some also, we also talk about uh, how, how bizarre is that the accident cases are more than coronavirus. Yeah. Right. And some of uh, the international news, we also talk about how, uh, how Beijing actually China. are expecting a second wave. Yeah. And also one of their supermarkets uh, banning on the salmon. Yeah. Just maybe there are other ways that to solve it. Yeah. 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 All right. So I guess that's it. All right. Thank you, everyone. So if right, anything as usual, uh, put the comments below and I'll mm -hmm. catch you next time on the next episode. All right. Thank All you. right. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.